greatest weapon of all, our most powerful weapon, our most beautiful weapon, our most brilliant weapon. Weaponry like we've never had before or since before. And we're accelerating development of hypersonic system that can fly five times the speed of sound. One billion dollar bomber. Survival over 100%. Top Secret Black Project. U.S. is testing secret hypersonic bomber that shocked Russia. A new Cold War is upon us. Russia and China have become too near peer to the U.S. for American comfort. To restore the gap in military might, the U.S. is forced to dive into history and revive one of its most successful aircraft, the SR-71 Blackbird, but in the form of a descendant called the SR-72, the son of Blackbird. The son of Blackbird, when unveiled, would be the fastest aircraft in the world, flying six times faster than the speed of sound. It would also fly the highest, and, according to Lockheed Martin, it would be one of the costliest aircraft ever developed, with a unit cost of over $1 billion. That makes it three times more valuable than the Blackbird, which would cost $350 million in today's money. And despite these budget-distorting numbers, it's all worth it. For one, the Blackbird has a 100% survival rate from enemy fire, meaning it was never shot down, and the son of Blackbird plans to be even more survivable than that. This is the story of the SR-72, son of Blackbird, a shocking hypersonic bomber that's everything the U.S. military could ask for, a safely guarded secret for the longest born out of a classified Black Project. Black Project A Black Project is a highly classified military project that is not publicly acknowledged by government, military personnel, or contractors until it is strategically safe to do so. The new SR-72, due to its tactical importance, was therefore conceived as a black project until the developer, Lockheed Martin, was allowed to announce its existence in 2013. It was a similar case to its predecessor, the Blackbird, in the 1900s, when the Blackbird put the U.S. in the lead in the race for hypersonic technology dominance. Like the son of Blackbird, the Blackbird was also developed by Lockheed Martin to be faster than any aircraft before it. So fast, in fact, that it didn't need any weapons to handle threats during missions. It would simply outrun them. Fighter aircraft, bullets, missiles, all were no match for the SR-71 and were always left in the dust. The SR-71, in addition to being the fastest aircraft in the world at the time, could also fly the highest, bordering on space with altitudes as high as 85,000 feet, so high that its pilots had to wear astronaut suits. Re-entry from so high up, or simply moving at its Mach 3 hypersonic speeds, would boil the aircraft up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 20% the temperature of the surface of the sun. To withstand this heat, the SR-71 is 92% titanium. This lavish use of titanium would also help keep the aircraft stealthy, which is critical for strategic reconnaissance aircraft. Thus, the SR-71 was basically invisible to radar and invincible to threats, justifying why, across its 33-year career in service, it was never shot down. This survival rate then begs the question of how lethal the SR-71 would have been if, like the SR-72, it had weapons, hypersonic weapons, like those being developed today. Hypersonic Weapons Hypersonic weapons today travel at speeds between Mach 5 and Mach 25. That's 1 to 5 miles each second, a capability that has caught the eye of many nations. But although India is having a noteworthy go at it, China, Russia, and the U.S. remain the key players. DFZF China The DFZF is a Chinese hypersonic glide vehicle capable of conventional and nuclear strike missions. 
Introduced in 2019, the DFZF is reported to reach speeds between Mach 5 and Mach 10. Being hypersonic, it is less susceptible to anti-ballistic missile countermeasures and is, therefore, likely to penetrate the layered air defenses of a U.S. carrier strike group. The closest, so far, to effective counter-hypersonic interception likely resolves around laser or railgun technology. But such technologies haven't exactly been perfected. The DFZF, being a maneuverable glide vehicle and not a missile on its own, could be fitted to various Chinese ballistic missiles, such as the DF-31 Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, and, as a result, extend the missile's range from 5,000 miles to 7,500 miles, almost the diameter of the Earth. 3M-22 Zircon, Russia Since Russian President Vladimir Putin announced in 2018 that Russia possessed the world's first operational hypersonic missile, the KH-47M2 Kinzhal, Russia has gone on to develop a newer hypersonic missile, known as the 3M-22 Zircon. The Zircon is a scramjet-powered, maneuvering, winged hypersonic cruise missile with a lift-generating center body. It is reported to have a maximum range of 620 miles and a top speed between Mach 5 and Mach 9. To draw a comparison in lethality, the Zircon has more than 242 times the on-cruise kinetic energy of America's highly successful Tomahawk missile. And, because it flies at hypersonic speeds within the atmosphere, the air pressure in front of it forms a plasma cloud as it moves, absorbing radar waves and making it practically invisible to radar. The potential of this stealthy hypersonic missile has raised concerns in the American camp that intercepting a flying Zircon is extremely difficult if at all feasible, at the current level of technology. AGM-183 ARRW, U.S. The AGM-183 ARRW from Lockheed Martin is a hypersonic glide weapon born out of a $480 million contract from the U.S. Air Force. It has a top speed above Mach 5, and at this speed, it can glide towards a target, evading air defenses every step of the way. It is currently undergoing tests with major success coming on May 14, 2022 at Edwards Air Force Base where the weapon demonstrated separation from the B-52H Stratofortress bomber. Its booster ignited and burned for the expected duration, and the weapon proved able to achieve speeds greater than Mach 5. However, once introduced into service, the AGM-183 would likely not be deployed on the 70-year-old B-52H used for the test, but instead, a newer bomber that's itself no stranger to hypersonic. And that bomber is none other than the SR-72 Son of Blackbird. SR-72 Son of Blackbird As the military prowess of Russia and China continue to grow, the U.S. once again has a need for an aircraft as invincible as the Blackbird, but more lethal. This is where the SR-72 Son of Blackbird comes to play. The Son of Blackbird is everything the Blackbird was, and more. It would have the widest array of weapons, including guns, bombs, missiles, and laser-directed energy weapons. Remaining a reconnaissance surveillance aircraft like its predecessor, the SR-72 would also feature the most intelligent of sensors and the highest quality cameras to take photos that cover 100 miles with each shot. To do this, and much more, the SR-72 would be able to fly at very high altitudes, altitudes bordering on space. And with space being NASA's second home, NASA has picked an interest in the development of the SR-72 and has already committed $1 billion to the aircraft. NASA does have a history of supporting aircraft such as this. Proof of this could be seen when they continued to use the SR-71 on missions even after the Air Force had retired the aircraft. NASA eventually followed suit and retired the SR-71 in 1999. This retirement left what was considered a coverage gap between surveillance satellites, manned aircraft, and unmanned aerial vehicles for ISR missions. To cover this gap, Lockheed Martin would make a private proposal to the Air Force in 2013 for the SR-72. It would be designed to be capable of penetrating protected airspace to observe and strike a target before the target could react. 
For this, the SR-72 would reach speeds as high as Mach 6, about twice as fast as its record-holding predecessor. To attain these speeds, Lockheed Martin teamed with Aerojet Rocketdyne to develop a turbine-based combined cycle engine. This engine overcomes the biggest challenge to hypersonic travel which is that traditional hypersonic scramjet engines alone cannot accelerate aircraft from a stationary position to a blur. The engine approaches this challenge by using turbojet engines to accelerate the aircraft from start position to speeds high enough to allow for the transition to a scramjet as the source of thrust. The resulting high speeds are useful for every kind of mission but do not come with the downside of proneness to accidents. For comparison, although none of the 32 SR-71s created was ever shot down by enemy fire, 12 were actually lost to accidents. Pilots may be having a difficult time piloting these superfast aircraft, and so the SR-72 could be unveiled as an unmanned aerial vehicle. It should also come with multi-role capabilities, translating its air superiority to dominance in air-to-air -air and air-to-ground combat surface warfare, close air support, and many other combat situations, and then use its maximized connectivity via its sensors to effectively execute strategic reconnaissance and surveillance missions. These and more are made possible by an SR-71 size bracket that enables the SR-72 to internally hold huge amounts of fuel and a new spectrum of weapons internally. With the SR-72 getting closer to introduction into service, it's safe to say that the dominance of the U.S. in the hypersonic space is about to soar to new heights, quite literally, thanks once again to Lockheed Martin. But to meet up with the timeline, Lockheed Martin needs you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. That would be all for this video. Thanks for watching.